It was a cloudy, cold, and foggy morning when I was driving from New Paltz, New York to the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. I'm a 23-year-old female and I'm a working zoologist at the Trevor Zoo at Millbrook School. If you're wondering why I'm traveling to the Pine Barrens, it's because I needed some time to myself and my parents rented me a cabin out there. Of course I was excited about this three-day weekend trip because not only would I have the entire cabin to myself, but I could go on the few hiking trails that they had throughout the forest. You know, I could witness all different types of wildlife out there as well. As a zoologist, it's fascinating to me to know about all different kinds of animals. I'm particularly looking for some coyotes though, maybe a few spiders. Anyways, fast forward five hours later and I had arrived in the Pine Barrens. It was sunny and a bit warmer in New Jersey than, you know, New York, and the tall, thick wooded trees bombarded the sunlight that flashed down on my car. I had never witnessed a car being swallowed up so fast by darkness as I turned down a road named Lakehurst and then that road's name changed into North White's Boggs Road, and my cabin was 12 miles down that long and dark road. To be honest, I was getting the chills as I drove down that road, and I almost stopped and turned my car around, but I ensured myself that I was just overthinking and that everything would be fine once I reached my nice and cozy cabin. 20 minutes had passed, and I had arrived in front of my cabin. It wasn't anything like I pictured what it would look like, though. It was old looking, had dusty stairs, the wood in the house looked worn out, the blinds looked pressed down on, and the windows were old and stained with water. I was disgusted at what my parents had rented me out for the weekend. So, you know what I did. I took out my phone and I dialed them up immediately. I remember asking my mom, What kind of cabin did you and dad rent for me? It looks like something that had been built out of the 17 or 1800s. It doesn't look safe and there are no locks on the doors from where I'm viewing. My mother replied, and she said, Some lady on the phone named Rachel had told me that the home had been refurbished, and she said that it was nice and warm on the inside. I then had told my mother that this Rachel lady has lied to you. She rented out a cabin that is terrible looking, and it looks something straight out of a horror film. You do realize that I can't stay the night here, right? You guys had me drive nearly 300 miles for a house that looks ran down and dangerous. I seriously need the number to that Rachel lady. She needs to give you guys a refund, I said. My mother implied that Rachel was out of the town for the weekend, and she wouldn't be receiving any calls until the following Tuesday. My mother had told me that my dad and her would get everything sorted out, and that I could still explore a bit of the forest if I wanted to. I just need to check into a hotel so that I could be safe. I told my mother, okay, on the phone, and she said, have a nice trip. The call ended. From there on out, I was sitting in my car in front of a creepy looking cabin and I had no idea what to do. Little did my mother know was that I don't have money for a hotel room for three days. All I could do was get my things out of the trunk and, uh, you know, head into the cabin. After I had gotten my things, I made my way up to the steps of the house and I heard squeaking coming from each stair that I had stepped on. Literally, every stair, every single stair. Upon opening the door to the cabin, I had thought that I would see complete trash and chaos, but it was regular looking. Everything was clean on the inside, surprisingly. You know, except for the water-stained windows. Therefore, I guess you should never judge a book by its cover. I felt relieved upon entering the house because it felt safe on the inside, even though there were no locks in the doors. I figured that nobody would know I was out in that cabin, though, because, you know, it was out in the middle of the woods, and... I could just push a chair up against the door just in case. I put my bags down in the other room that was adjacent to the small living room that led to the door. The bed was soft and the sheets were clean. At least they looked clean from where I was viewing it. I had got my water, flashlight, hunter's knife, hiking boots, backpack, and bear spray, and I prepared myself for a nice two mile hike before it got too dark outside. It was around 5.30 p.m. when I headed outside and onto the trails of the Pine Barrens. I was walking through a trail that was bombarded by tall and thick trees, and all you could see was dirt, leaves, and a little bit of sunlight that flashed in and out of the trees as I started to walk. The whole point of this hike was to spot some snakes, some coyotes like I mentioned previously, and some spiders of different kinds. As if you guys didn't know before, well you might know, but just in case, I'm a huge fan of spiders, especially the big ones, you know, like the tarantulas and stuff. It was 6.15 p.m., and so far I had found nothing but some rabbits and a few river streams. 
I was starting to get discouraged, and I was about to turn back around, but that's when a group of men and women approached me as I was walking towards their direction. They all seemed friendly and approachable, so I wasn't afraid of them speaking to me. One of the men asked me if I were out here to search for the devil, and I said, Excuse me? He said, Are you out here searching for the devil? You know, the Jersey Devil? I replied and said, <laughs> No, sir. I'm not searching for the Jersey Devil. I'm searching for some wildlife, and uh, if you don't mind me asking, what is the Jersey Devil? Their faces all turned to a shock as I said this, and they started whispering to each other. The man then turned around and said, Well, the Jersey Devil is a winged and horned creature that is said to inhabit these woods. Legend says that a woman in the 1700s was impregnated with the 13th child who happened to be the devil. The lady was then killed by the devil child and then it took off with its pair of wings and flew off into the forest. There have been numerous sightings since the 1700s. You know, most people don't usually venture out into these woods if they aren't looking for the devil. Now, me, myself, I didn't want to seem rude, but I almost let out a burst of tears from laughter as the man told me this. I said, sir, I am a zoologist at the Trevor Zoo at Millbrook in New York, and there has not been a shred of evidence to prove of such a thing that you just said. I'm not going to argue with you, but I know there's no such thing as a woman being impregnant with Satan's child, okay? Don't you think someone would have seen a creature as terrifying as the one you've just described, and already sent in evidence to scientists to prove its existence? I'm sorry, sir, but I don't believe in things that can't be scientifically proven. A lady had then interrupted me, and she said, You know, just because things have not been scientifically proven doesn't mean it isn't real. Ma'am, I know you're a zoologist and all, but um, you and nobody else has discovered every part of the water, space, or the forest. You can't tell people what is and is not real. Now, I'm not trying to persuade you to believe in the Jersey Devil or anything, but you should watch what you say. I kindly told the lady that, I am 100% positive that there is no Jersey Devil out in these woods and that I am entitled to believe in whatever I please. I told her that I am going to finish my hike and I am done with this conversation. The lady had then told me a few more words as I began to walk away. I am not trying to cause an argument with you ma'am, I just want you to be safe out here. These words aren't a place for a person to be by themselves, especially not these woods. I kindly told her, okay, and finished with the rest of my hike. 30 minutes had passed and I had checked my phone to see how far I had walked from the cabin to where I was standing. I somehow walked 4 miles into the forest and it was getting dark very quickly in the forest. By that time, I had seen no wildlife and I knew that it was time for me to head back to the cabin before it got too dark. Now, I don't believe in no Jersey Devil, but I do know that there are dangerous animals out in the forest and I definitely don't need to be here at night time, so I took a sip of my water and headed back. I'll fast forward to get two miles back to the cabin because that's just boring, and uh, that's when things started to take an eerie turn. I heard shuffling through the branches of the tall trees, and I turned on my flashlight and looked to see if I had saw what I was looking for earlier. I couldn't see anything, I just heard shuffling and weird animal noises that sounded like it was coming from the trees. Okay, at this point, I was sure I was getting stalked by some wolves or something. In fact, I was so sure that I started getting chills that ran down my spine and throughout my entire body. And as dumb as this is going to sound, I did it anyway. I said in a loud but trembling voice, Hello? Seconds after I had said hello, I heard a loud whining but deeper toned yell that sounded so terrifying that I felt like my ears were going to bleed. I had no idea what type of animal that was but I knew that I'd be in serious trouble if I didn't start running the whole two miles back to my cabin. So that's what I did. I took off and I started running. I had never felt so terrified in my entire 23 years of living, and I felt tears coming down my eyes as I was running back to the cabin. I heard a whole lot of deep-toned but monstrous screams in the back of me while I was running. But you know what the most terrifying thing was? Whatever was chasing me must have stopped, or whatever, because... I remember about a few seconds ago that I felt things being thrown at me. You know, as if you're playing tag or something and the person's running and you're trying to pull tactics to be able to catch up to them. Yeah, I think that was what was happening to me. Whatever it was chasing me was throwing stuff at me so it could get me to slow down so that it could catch me. I kept on running though and I never looked back or stopped. I knew that if I had stopped running I would die and no one would hear from me again. Man. 
to two miles for like forever, but I was so scared that I didn't want to stop. It's like the adrenaline in my body took over and made me run as fast as I possibly could have did. My heart was pounding inside my chest as I ran through the thick and intense forest while still being chased by this sort of animal. I had run over a branch while running and felt immense pain in my lower legs. I knew that I had been cut and I would eventually have to slow down. So I slowed down and hid behind a tree that was dangerously close to one of the river streams that I told you guys about early in the story. I mean so close that if I took one step back, I'd be straight in the water. Anyways, I was crying and my leg was incredibly bloody. The tree I ran into must have been sharp because the blood was gushing out of my leg. I needed emergency care right away, but I knew I couldn't get it because I was still about a mile from my car. And if I dialed out on my phone, then whatever was chasing me would have heard me. So... I cut a piece of my shirt with my hunter's knife and I tied it around my leg so that I could stop the bleeding. I had to get back up and keep running even though my leg was injured because I needed to get to my car so that I could drive out of the forest. Once again, I got back on my two feet after holding on to a tall thick tree that I was standing next to and I started running again, or at least I tried to, and surprisingly, I didn't hear anything this time. I stopped for a second to look back just one tiny second. I didn't see anything. I thought something was still out there, but I just didn't see it. Anyways, I kept running some more. At least for now, anyway. 30 minutes passed, and I had finally returned to my cabin in my car. I went to my cabin, I got my things, and I headed to my car. I didn't bother putting everything back where it should be because I was terrified of whatever was chasing me would return. So I just threw it in the back seat of my car, jumped in the front seat, made a small U-turn, and headed out of that forest. I will never forget being chased by the unknown. I don't know if it was an animal running after me or if it was a bat of some sort, but I know that it was large, made lots of weird noises that I had never heard from any known animal, and it was dangerously close to getting me. As I made my way back into the road and out of the forest, I could still see a large shadow of some sort following my car through the, out the thick and intense woods. I'm 27 years old now, and I still remember that terrible night. I will never visit the woods ever again, and I'm still curious about what I saw that night. Four years later, and I have changed my views on lots of things, though. Remember earlier in the story when the group of people were telling me about that devil Jersey child thing? Yeah. Maybe that thing was chasing me. I don't know, though. I know that there are things out there that have not been discovered by scientists and they may never be discovered. I know that we as human beings have not seen every single living creature on this planet and, you know, there's probably things out there that are far too frightening for the human eye to experience. I just want my fellow listeners to be safe out there and to live your life with caution. I'll never step foot in another forest again. I'd like to believe now that maybe it was the Jersey Devil. Maybe it was. Maybe. Just maybe. Thanks for listening.